Hey guys, welcome back to the Man Cave with Big Kev. Thank you very much for tuning in. This is part six of the emergency box series. And this time we're going over first aid and medications. Just a quick recap on where we've come from. We've gone over from anywhere between the box itself all the way up to food, shelter, fire and heat and a couple of other things as well. So if you want to go and check out the rest of the series, there'll be a link in the description. That'll take you to the whole series, the whole playlist for the emergency box series. So don't forget to share it with your friends and family and bring awareness and preparedness to people that may need it in the future. So let's get into first aid and medication. All right, so I've got a few things here to go over and we're gonna start with the obvious thing which is a first aid kit. So this here is a kit that uh, essentially was given to us by Bunnings. Uh, when their bonus would come through, usually they'd give you something like a cricket set or a Monopoly board or something with the Bunnings brand on it. So. Ended up getting one of these bad boys, which is a really, really good kit. I'm not too sure who makes it, um, but it's very telling who who does make it. I just can't think of the company, but it's just been rebranded as Bunnings. So this is a really good kit. So when I say first aid kit, um, a lot of people will say, oh, build your own kit to your own needs and all that sort of stuff. But personally, I would invest your money into a big kit like this, something between the $50 to $100 mark to get you started. You can go a bit cheaper and then you can add onto it from there. So a kit like this is really good because it's just, it's quite comprehensive and it really is mainly a boo kit. So you do get a little bit of extra stuff in this, this size kit. Obviously, we've got uh, like a pencil there and a pen and some spare batteries for, I think there might be a thermometer in here. And what have we got here? Splinter probes, just all the basic stuff there. Um, you're going to get all your basics in a kit like this, and then you can obviously add to it. So it's a really good idea. Um, we'll just have a quick look through this one. We've got uh, tweezers and scissors. This is also really nice to have uh, the clear piece here so that if you do add stuff in there that uh, that is perishable, like your saline solutions or anything like that, you can write the dates down and you've got those in the window there so you can see when they expire and you can change your stuff out. So it's always good to go through your kit probably about every six months or so just so that you can uh, see what you've got and see if there has been any expiry dates gone past so that you can rotate those items. But opening it up here, it's quite a comprehensive kit this one. It's really, really good. Yep, so this is just actually what's in here. So just a quick look here. We've got uh, some gloves. We've got a uh, different few bandages there. Triangular bandage. Uh, yeah, quite a few bandages actually, quite a few different ones, compression ones, some tape, band-aids, alcohol wipes, scissors, so these shears are, are pretty good for cutting your um, clothes and stuff like that. Um, all the stuff that you would expect to get into in a basic kit. The good thing about these kits is that everything is labelled, so if you use something and you don't you can't remember what was in there it'll tell you so you can just go to the store and you can resupply it so highly recommend one of these sorts of kits here you can spend quite a lot of money on first aid stuff because first aid equipment is not cheap so but you get what you pay for so that's a really good kit Expanding on the kit there, like I said, you can uh, buy some tailored gear or some just a few extra things there. Um, this is a little bit extreme for a 72-hour kit, but I'll just go through it anyway. This is what I keep in my car. 
um, because I do security work and you just never know if you're out on the road uh, and you come up to a car accident you might need to use something out of it so just on the front here we've got some shears and a little pouch there just I made them orange so that they're easy to see a pen but in a trauma kit um, I've pretty much got just a tourniquet so that's a combat application tourniquet a tourniquet tourniquet whatever you want to call it uh, some rubber gloves I know these should be sealed but in a dire situation they will do the job um, trauma bandages uh, some hand sanitizer, some gauze for packing wounds or whatever. So this is a little bit extreme uh, in the way of a 72-hour kit, but uh, in a disaster you just don't know, uh, especially in hurricanes or cyclones. If you've got flying debris, you can get some pretty nasty injuries with, um, with the debris in that. So just an extra option there. You don't um, necessarily have to know how to use this stuff yourself. Myself, I'm not trained to use this sort of stuff, but it helps to have it on you in case there is somebody around that does know how to use it, like an off-duty paramedic or fiery or police or whatever the case may be. If you've got the gear on you, then it's it's going to be beneficial to you or someone else that may need it and i would highly recommend that you do not use any of the medical gear in this or in your kit that you want to build if you are not confident on using it yourself so it's just nice to have there in case someone else can so another really good uh, item to build on your first aid kit here which i don't yet have is a snake bite kit so you can buy a nice snake bite kit for sixty dollars or whatever the case may be or you can just go out and buy yourself some compression bandages for that purpose but that's really good for rural areas and the outer suburbs of your uh, major city yeah i can't see myself someone getting bitten by a brown or whatever in the middle of the city so you could still have one if you're so inclined um so that's pretty much it for the first aid please 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 go and get some sort of training with a first aid um, course with somewhere just so that you have a better under understanding of how to use your gear there are plenty of places out there that offer that service so i would highly recommend going and getting some training. I'm in the security industry, so I get first aid training every three years, CPR every year. So that's good to keep um, my mind fresh. However, learning how to use gear is something that you don't learn in those, uh, those sort of scenarios. It's just pretty much all theory stuff. So getting to know a few different techniques and stuff with your gear is always a good idea. So apart from the first aid, I wanted to move over to medication. So just something that I'd like to carry with me uh, wherever I go, but uh, something good to keep in your box is stuff like vitamin tablets, um, stuff like that, just so that you, if you do have to bug out at some stage, um, and the food that you've got there isn't it's not home cooked food your body might take a little bit of use to getting used to it so you know having vitamin tablets there is um is a good way just to to ensure that you're getting those vitamins and minerals that you need especially in the hotter months um electrolytes are really good as well just to keep you hydrated keep those salts and minerals in your body so you don't cramp up and all that sort of stuff so really good options there uh, medication so panadol nurofen mylanta all the stuff that you would use in your everyday life um, is good to keep on hand at one time so having these stored in a nice dark place in the cupboard somewhere don't do what we do and our stuff is just piled into a couple of 
baskets in a cupboard and it's just you got to sift through it every time you're going to find something so a really good idea is to just go to bunnings buy a three dollar container that you can keep all your medications in so that uh, you know where they are at one time so that if you do have to bug out at some stage you can just grab that one box and go so that's a really good idea and uh, just making sure that you're keeping the expiry dates up to date and rotating your stock as well uh, when it comes to refrigerated stuff it's a little bit more difficult so i mean you might be caught in a power outage for some period of time they might give you a time frame like we're working on the lines from you know two to five and you've prepared yourself for that because i've given you prior warning something goes wrong and it extends that time and it could be a day or two days where you're without power so medications that require refrigeration so obviously if you've got a freezer that's going to be beneficial so uh, a really good idea is to just have a few ice packs on hand so that you can one stick them in the fridge to prolong your refrigerated food as well but uh, another good idea is to uh, stick a, an empty thermos into your freezer because it's insulated um, cool it down and then put ice in it and then put your refrigerated antibiotics or whatever it is into that and that's going to insulate it and keep it cooler for longer so just a really good idea there to uh, make sure that your refrigerated uh, medications don't go off and it's just going to give you that little bit more into keeping them good and then the reason why I say is you put your thermos in the freezer first is so that when you um, put your ice in, then it's no, ice isn't going into a warm cup, it's not going to melt your ice straight away. So just remember to, to cool that vessel down first, then put your ice in and then your medications as well. And just touching on the, uh, the first aid kit here, you would do this in the same scenario you would with your fire blanket and your fire extinguisher, which we went over in fire and heat, and it's to keep it somewhere where you know where it is. Uh, it's, a, it's a good idea to keep this in a, um, in a dark place as well, in a cool dark place. I say cool because uh, your saline solutions and stuff aren't going to be affected by the heat. If there's any creams that you've added in there, they're going to uh, last a little bit longer as well. Um, also, with this sort of covering here, this plastic cover, this is really good quality stuff here. But with a cheaper kit, you might find that um, this might yellow and go hard and crack and it's just going to ruin your kit. So keeping that out of um, UV light, so not in direct sunlight, not under fluoro lights, uh, if it is going to be on a little shelf with all your um, emergency box equipment, just put a cover over it and make sure it's in a nice, cool, shady place. So that's all I'm going to go over with the first aid stuff. So what we've covered here is the first aid kit, where to build on that with the trauma kit and the snake bite kit. Rotate your stock and um, because things like sticking plasters and that, they or band-aids, they they tend to go off a little bit in the heat so that's why you're storing in a cool place yeah that's what i've got to go over so thank you very much for tuning in uh if any of the more experienced guys can elaborate on a few things here or tell me if i've said something wrong as well um i don't want to be giving anyone the wrong information as well so i know there's a couple of paramedics out there that watch my channel so i really appreciate your input there and for you to put your two cents worth in as well so there you go that's it thank you for watching don't forget to check me out on facebook and instagram as well they're going really well and uh, i'll put the link in the description for the playlist so you can go and check out all the videos don't forget to like subscribe comment please put your comments in there it's always good to engage and i'll see you on the next video thanks guys see you later